So next we're gonna talk about shipping container farms, which are kind of a trend, and we'll go over the pros and cons of, of those. Um, we have a pretty unique one here. Um, this is, we call it Grozilla, and it's actually two shipping containers welded together with a doorway cut between them. Long story how we wound up with it, but we co-manage it now with a group called Restorative Farms who is doing some really great nonprofit work. So when we walk in to start our, our IPM procedures, one of the things you're gonna notice is the noise level. And that's, we're not gonna turn everything off. We're gonna let you hear it because part of hydroponics, especially in this type of system, is learning how to deal with the noise and then also the lights. So we'll get into that in a second, but first we wanna show you how we clean up and how we get ready to enter this facility. All right, so first I want you to take a look at this. This is the visitor log. You do wanna keep track of everyone who's coming and going in your shipping container farm. This is part of the IPM stuff that we talked about, and this is a way that you can really eliminate pests by keeping track of who's coming and going. Also, look at this. This is a lab coat. You wanna have some type of clothing covers when you go into your total control facility. So I haven't been doing a lot today out in the garden or anything, so the, the lab coat's gonna work just fine. Next, we're gonna put our foot on this foot bath and just scrape them real good. Make sure the bottoms of our shoes are clean and sterile. And then we're ready to go into the head house. So that's one thing you're gonna notice right away. In addition to the noise that we just discussed, right? Um, we've got a door here. That's just another part of the process of entering the grow space. You want to have barriers, you know? Um, so we're going to keep these doors closed at all times. It's a good airlock, and it's a good practice to, to help eliminate pest pressures. Follow me on in here. This is what we call the head house, um, and it's one of the things that makes this grow space so unique. So in this room, we have basically everything that is not involved with growing the plants to fruition, okay? So we've got sinks. We've got a table where we can clean things. You'll notice we've got a nice stainless steel sink here um, that can use for washing and packaging and cleaning. Uh, we plant the seeds in here. Uh, we do all the propagation. And come on in here, let me show you this. I know it's gonna be super loud, it's hard to hear, but this is our plumbing system. And look how huge these reservoirs are. Um, that was designed this way for a reason, okay? Um, the reason for that large reservoir and for the large size pump is that we could daisy chain additional grow spaces onto this thing. Uh, we think we could get at least three more grow space units attached to this if we wanted to, and because of all the infrastructure that we have and the way this is designed. Um, also, we have our grow rack in here, as we discussed. This is the way to start your seedlings, okay? This is how you want to do it. It's going to save you a lot of space and time in the long run. So every week we start about four to 600 plants in this grow space. Um, and they all get used. Again, this is a grow rack. The lights aren't on right now, but these are the grow bars, the grow lights. Um, now let's go look at the grow space. So you'll notice it's a steel floor, stainless steel graded floor. Um, you can sweep it up very easy. It's easy to sanitize, uh, easy to clean. Looks good. Okay, so now we're in the grow space. All right, so this is where we're gonna take the baby plants and we're gonna grow them out to fruition. We're gonna grow them to harvest, all right? So what you're looking at is what's called shallow water culture tables or stands. And these are, these are custom made, so it's a little bit different than what we looked at inside of the greenhouse, um, but they're very similar. Um, the reservoirs are in the other room that we looked at, right? And again, I know this all starts to sound familiar, but we've got a, a large pump in that case that's gonna be pumping the water to each of these individual shelves, right? So on the, the back end of this thing, we've got what's the feed line. We have what's called the feed line. Um, so the water's coming in and it's flooding these, uh, each of these shelves with a, about three, three and a half inches of water. Uh, the, the stands are built out of dimensional lumber covered over with a pond liner, right? Um, very similar to the deep water, it's just less water. Then all the way at the end here, let's come take a look at this. All the way at the end here, we have our drainage line. So you'll notice, see that little piece, that little stub up of PVC pipe? That's, believe it or not, very important. That's gonna control the level of water. So if I wanted more water for whatever reason in each tray, uh, I would just use a longer piece of pipe. If I wanted less, you would just cut it short. Um, these are just extra foam to eliminate 
algae. It just helps keep the water covered. Again, each shelving unit has LED lights, which we'll turn them on and let you look at it. It's pretty cool looking. So let's talk pros and cons. So the pros are, it's a totally controlled environment. We can grow some amazing quality produce in here. Um, we've done strawberries, we've done all kinds of herbs, we've got a lot of leafy greens, all different types of things. Um, in a total control, you don't have to worry about pests as long as you're following your proper IPM and your protocols. Um, there's fail safe built into this type of system if you set the plumbing up properly. So there's a lot of pros. The cons are it is expensive. And this is still a very small space. This is a 40 foot, uh, I believe they're eight foot wide grow space. So no matter what, no matter what anyone tells you, that's just not a lot of product coming out of here, you know, by and large. Even though we're stacked, we're shelves, whatever, um, you're probably gonna need more than what you can grow in here to make a living, to make any kind of money. Maybe mushrooms, maybe microgreens of very specific products, maybe if it's a tissue culture setup, but if you're talking about conventional leafy greens and herbs, maybe as a sideline, it could make sense. Um, but even then, you, you, you deal with a lot of energy expense, and that can be problematic. So cons to this type of system, think about your initial investment. Um, I know a lot of places sell shipping containers very cheap. You still have to insulate them. You still have a lot of infrastructure that you're going to need to set up to be able to grow in these things. Uh, particular if you want to set up like we have, where we have multiple shipping containers, right? Um, so that's a lot of money up front. And think about how long it may take to recoup that um, versus what you're selling. Also, there's the utility costs. Very expensive to run these grow lights for a long enough time to be able to grow product to, to full harvest. So you definitely need to factor that in before you even think about getting into a shipping container farm. Again, if you have money to burn, to play with, if you want it as a hobby, or maybe as a sideline, something like that, for whatever reason, maybe it makes sense, but for most people, this is not something that we recommend. So we've lit it up, so you can see it's very bright, it's got this strange color of light, this kind of pink glow. Um, a lot of people don't like working in these, and this is why, you know, it can, if you're in here for several hours, especially if it's, you know, your day to clean the floor and everything, it can be, kind of challenging and kind of give you a headache, you know, staring at these weird pink lights all day. Um, but there's ways to kind of mitigate that and we recommend that. You'll notice overhead we've got white uh, shop lights or work LED lights. So <clears throat> you want to be able to, at your timer, make sure that you can turn the lights off while you're working in here. That's going to be important. You don't want to be looking at this all day long. Um, it's not, doesn't make for a very good work environment. So another factor to think about in this type of grow is the uh, actual functioning. It's very uncomfortable in here. I, you can see me, I'm a pretty small guy and even I have a hard time in here. Um, if I were much bigger than myself, I would hate working in here. It's very difficult, you have to get down, stoop down, you have to stand on ladders to get to the top level. Each of the rafts are roughly two foot by four foot um, it's awkward to work around these bars. Everything you do in here is pretty awkward. Um, so you need to consider that as well, especially if you're growing like leafy greens. It can be very difficult to move around. If you have multiple people, you're constantly in everyone's way. Um, it's just a difficult, it's difficult. So think about that as well. I knew this was going to be quite the experience. All right, let's try this. You got me good. All right, here we go.